This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. I'm here with Kim and with special guest today, E.B. Tucker. And it's a subject that is going quick, rapidly changing. So don't listen to a word we're saying. Just hear what we're saying. Because it's time, it's just time to pay attention. Any comments, Kim? Yeah, well, E.B. Tucker is the uh, author of the book, Why Gold, Why Now? We're going to talk about gold. We're going to talk about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. We're going to talk about the Fed coin. We're going to talk, and everything is, as you said, Robert, changing so quickly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, and I think uh, E.B. has uh, a few revelations that uh, may, you're going to want to stay tuned for. So, you know, Kim and I have been gold and silver bugs for years. I've gone to Bitcoin a while, while ago, did very well, picked it up at seven or nine. And today I'm listening, about, I'm hearing about Fed coin or whatever that means. And uh, I was listening to records, Jim Records, my friend talk about it. And everything is so um, transient right now. I hate to use that word. So it's really time to pay attention. So E.B., welcome to the program. Welcome, E.B. Thanks for having me back. And let's first first go over something I've always been cons- uh, you know curious about is the the gold royalty business. Well, what is it? What is the biggest company that does that um, out of Nevada, Franco Nevada? Franco Nevada. But the the thing the thing to realize, and in the book uh, chapter twenty four, I, I talk about the best business in the world. It's the story of how Franco Nevada started in the eighties. They bought a royalty for two million dollars. That's returned over one billion dollars in cash payments. One billion dollars uh, in cash payments uh, since, since that time. So Franco Nevada is the perfect case study for people to realize, you know, what's possible in the royalty business. But Robert, I want you to think about the word royalty, royal. So you don't see the queen doing a lot of uh, blasting and digging at the mine site. She she's, takes her percentage, you know, clip all right off the top. I mean, the 1%, 2%, whatever. And she says, you, you boys, uh, do whatever you want to do down there, but I'll take my 1% once you pull it up to the surface. That's, that's uh, the concept of the business. You know, Franco Nevada doesn't have to invest in that mine that's paid a billion dollars back. And I think once people see that, it really, it really shows them the power of that business. And although we don't make any endorsements, um, what is your, the fund that you run or the mine that you run on this? So Metalla Royalty, ticker is MTA in the U.S. on the New York Stock Exchange. And Metalla is very similar to Franco. The business is very similar. We have 72 royalties now, and it's only gold and silver focus. And the premise is you have decades of exposure to higher gold prices without having to make any investment. You know, the company's got about four employees. It's really fascinating. I mean, nowadays, you don't want to have a business anymore, Robert, with thousands of employees, you know, that that's, that's a recipe for disaster. So I, I like a business with four employees. Right. And, and, you know, Kim and I, um, I just, you know, China is now the largest gold producer in the world. Yeah. And the reason is they took our gold mine. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, started, we, started, gold mine. we started a gold mine in the nineties in uh, Dalian, China. And when we struck gold, Kim and I were billionaires for about a day until the Chinese realized what we had done. And so we got no royalties. We had all the loss. And now they're the the biggest producers in the world. So I'm kind of interested in Franco Nevada and Metallica right now. (laughs) So so, so the the thing to you, this is a very important thing that you you recognize is that the where the mine is, is a big problem because you can't move the mine. Right. So you couldn't, you and Kim couldn't have said, wait a minute, let's relocate this thing to a friendly country. So, so when you look at the map of the royalties that Patala owns on the website, you'll see that they're spread across friendly territory. And this Canada is a great place. You know, there's a lot of royalties in Canada. Nevada is a great place. You have, you have a court system in Nevada where if someone tries to take the mine, you can go over there and defend yourself. And so okay. to your point, that's a great, that's a very, very key part of the royalty business. So EB, how, how exactly does the royalty business work? Are you part of the mines or how does that work? No, you you have nothing to do with them except for you have a 1% or 2% claim on everything that's found in that ground. So and I want you to think of it like this. So you're a, you're a farmer somewhere and you have this big piece of land and someone comes out and, and, and says, I'll, I want to explore on your land and I'll give you 1% of anything I find. And you say, go ahead, have at it. Cause I don't think there's anything here, but a bunch of scrub brush. 
Well, 10 years later, he says, look, I, I, it turns out I found something here and I'm going to sell my claim to, to someone else and you can keep the royalty because that's, that's your right. And then years down the road, there's an actual mine there that's going to begin production. And, and you've got a 1% claim to every mineralized asset that comes out of the ground there. You hear about this in the oil business all the time. You know, it's a guy in Texas that ends up with a huge gas, you know, natural gas mine on the, on the site, right? Huge wells producing, and he becomes very rich, far wealthier than he could have become, you know, farming cotton. Okay. So that's, that's the concept of the business is that it's, it's exposure to production without having to participate that farmer didn't ever have to go work on the natural gas well in Texas. You know, he just stayed in his rocking chair and waited for the postman to come with the checks. Uh, so a, a mining company wants to, to mine on this property and there's an existing royalty that, that dates back oftentimes 20, 30 years uh, when someone started uh, looking for gold on that property. That's what Franco Nevada bought, by the way, they didn't, they didn't go looking for gold. In fact, the founder of Franco Nevada realized that looking for gold is a terrible business. I mean, you're almost better off buying lottery tickets at the gas station. The, the odds are better. And it's very hard to find a big gold mine. And so if you can pull these royalties that are in areas that have a chance at having a gold mine, you can pay a, a proper price for them. That's the other key. And then a gold mine is discovered there. You, you, you just, it's, it's unbelievable, the economics. And so you get to capture that income without having to operate bulldozers and, you know, run, run the mine yourself. You just sit back and monitor. So th that's what we should have done, but we didn't do <laughs> How does somebody uh, get in touch with Metallica? I mean, they Metallica. well, you, Metallica. If, if you've Metallica, if you've, if you've got access to a computer, which I'm, I'm curious how you're not watching this right now, if you don't, you can type in the ticker symbol MTA and it should pop right to the website or to the company's details at any brokerage account. And uh, there's a, there's a great presentation there. The investor relations team is very responsive and, and they're happy to walk you through the business. But I got to tell you, Robert, it's very, very simple. You know, remember a widget company is complicated. You got to buy all the materials, put them together with a royalty company. You just look at the royalties and you can analyze them very easily. And uh, then the gold price does the rest. I mean, as the gold price climbs, the value of the royalties climbs dramatically. So you end up with a, with a multiplier effect. Well, we understand how tough it is to mine. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a zoo. Plus Maybe two. you try you, you try the royalty business. I mean, you, mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a probably right up your alley after your experience that you've been through. Right. So. I just don't like dealing with the Chinese. <laughs> no, I mean, well, it, um, it's, 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 it, so, so I think a lot of people are hearing you say that and they don't have context. Let me just add one thing. I, I, in 2014, I went to Cambodia to see the, the country's first commercial gold mine. And when I arrived there, there was a group of 30 Chinese that arrived the night before they had a mining concession on an adjacent piece of property. I've never seen anything like it. They hit the ground and they dispersed into the woods with all their, their geological exploration gear. And the, the guys told me, they said, wait, wait and see what happens. These guys, they won't even, they won't even sleep. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll find everything that's here and, and repatriate it. And this is what they do. You know, they, they, they're intent on being the world's biggest gold miner. And you have to ask yourself if gold is so stupid, like you read the U S financial news, gold is useless and it's a barbarous relic and nobody wants it. And only, only, you know, strange people that are out of touch. Why do the Chinese want it? I mean, they want every ounce. They won't let you leave the country with an ounce. Well, and it's really interesting to think about that. Yeah. So let me get a word in here. Okay. I've seen them sure. all over the world. Now, what you're saying is true. I've seen them in Zimbabwe, uh, Cameroon and America sits there. We send in troops and they send in capitalists. You know, it, it is the most shocking thing to watch what China is doing. And then, you know, we talk about the Kardashians or whatever America talks about these days. So anyway, I want to get into this whole thing. It's, you know, we'd better wake up pretty quickly so I, Kim and I love gold. I mean, we have tons of gold, physical gold. I don't and hold silver. paper. We don't hold paper gold. We don't hold ETFs. And we don't own mining shares except for a few companies that we did start. So we're doing very well in gold. The concern I want to talk to you about right now is, like I said, Jim Records is a friend of mine. And I've been studying this Fed coin concept. 
And I don't know if one of the reasons gold is so important is because simply because gold and silver are money. You know, they, they've been there, as, we call it God's money, because I've been all over the world looking for gold and silver, trudged up and down mountainsides and seen sites that were built thousands of years ago by the Incas or the Chinese. And in 71, when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, what else happened is our schools took the subject of gold out of study. I think it's so interesting, E.B. And then you work for a friend of mine. His, his name is Doug Casey. He and I were just in Can Cancun together uh, about three weeks ago. And we're the old guys been, you know, singing from the hymnal of gold for all these years. And then now we have crypto or Fed coin. So what, what is your prognosis on this whole industry going from the, what I call God's money to people's money or crypto money, which was Bitcoin. And then now the Fed is realizing that Bitcoin was kicking their butt and they better get into Fed coin or whatever, whatever we call digital, it right now. Digital currency. Digital. Yeah. What, what, what do you see happening? Well, I mean, it's, it's a financial prison. Uh, chapter 17 of my book, I, I have a chapter on FedCoin. It's a, it's a term that I first came up with in 2016 when people didn't even know what Bitcoin was. And we were talking about FedCoin, which shows that we're, we're a little out of touch. We, we realize people need to stair step into these ideas. But FedCoin has been in the works for a long time. Um, if you think about it, the United States uses the dollar as a weapon around the world. Okay, You hear this all the time. Russia is bad. We're going to use sanctions against people there. Uh, Iran is bad. We're going to use sanctions. What are these sanctions? These sanctions are, will block you out of using any sort of modern day currency in the financial system. And of course, Bitcoin has been a workaround for some people. And if you are a technocrat, that likes to run around the world and, and smack people, you know, when they don't obey your orders or they conflict with what you want to do, you don't want things that allow people to get around that. So it's totally logical that the, the currency would evolve. Now, what does FedCoin do? FedCoin is a, is a, um, a digital currency idea that, that would replace the, the dollar. Now it wouldn't replace $1 bills or something because you still have to have something to, you know, buy a soda with or whatever you consume. I mean, this is, we're talking about moving uh, regular amounts of money, buying things. And the average person would get used to having a digital wallet. That's now a term that you're comfortable with, right? Remember 20 years ago, we talked about an E dollar and everybody said, this is terrible. We can't do this. But now everyone's comfortable with the digital wallet. I mean, even, even uh, uh, older generations are, are comfortable with the idea of having digital money. And so FedCoin does a few things. Number one, so it even, makes it impossible. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. So Shane, I don't even use cash anymore because I, I, you know, I'd rather have a credit card. So, yeah. so what's the difference between a credit card and FedCoin? So, so the, 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 the thing that FedCoin will do is it will give centralized control. That's what people need to see is that there's centralized control. So every single Fed coin, just like every Bitcoin has a history attached to it. You've started to see now where there's a alleged ransomware attack. And they say the, the, the brilliant people at the DOJ and NSA have tracked down the recipient of this Bitcoin and pulled it back from their digital wallet. Well, wait a minute. I, th I thought it was totally anonymous. Like it was a Swiss bank account in my pocket, but it's not. It's everything is tracked. So you can trace these Bitcoin transactions back to the original user. So the digital, and then you can, digital wallet, yeah. you'll be able, they'll be able to trace every move you make, everything yeah. you spend, where you are. That's right. Everything. So, and you've, you've probably been, you know, stuck on a plane or something and played liars poker with a dollar, right? So you look at a dollar and there's all these serial numbers and it's a, it's a, a game where you can guess the serial numbers on the dollar. Well, every dollar is a serial number, every fed coin, will be recorded and enshrouded on this blockchain. And, and people say, well, blockchain, I've heard of that. That's good. You can make money off that. Do you see how the narrative now supports people going along with this Fed coin? But what happens is we say, Robert, you have been making a lot of statements that we don't agree with. And, and you've been encouraging people to not to trust their elected leaders. And, and Robert, you don't, you know, a lot of things are bothering us. So we're going to restrict your your FedCoin wallet and allow you to only spend on basic necessities. This is absolutely possible on a, a blockchain. And then you, it eliminates tax evasion. So there's no way you can evade taxes because every 
FedCoin is recorded on this blockchain and every transaction track. So as you can see, if you are a, a control minded person, you would think this is great. Yeah. So anyway, the, the thing we want to discuss here is that, you know, I, I'm so old. I remember when credit cards came out. Yeah. And then now I don't use, I'd rather use a credit card because it's easier to yada, yada, yada. But that comes from a bank. Then we have this, uh, the Fed. Then Bitcoin came out. So we, Kim and I bought into it simply because we always believe in starting small and then understanding the system, how it works. And then now we're talking about a possible Federal Reserve coin. And I want to know what's going to happen to Goldman Sachs, you know, all, all the other banks out there right now, if the Fed just takes control of the whole thing. When we come back, we'll be talking more, we'll be talking more to E.B. Tucker. He's, he's the author of Why Gold, Why Now? And we're talking about past, present, and future. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And this is really a show about money, going back to what we call God's money, gold and silver. And then where we are today about gold and silver royalties, but also where, and then we all heard about Bitcoin. And now we're just uh, we're discussing with E.B. Tucker, uh, the author of Why Gold right now. He also works for a good friend of mine, Doug Casey. And Doug and I are the old guys in this business. <laughs> it's better that the younger guys take over. But it's going so fast. And I was just listening to Jim Records, another friend of ours. He was talking about when the Fed coin comes out. And I've heard this number of times, EB, we don't need banks anymore. So just as truck drivers will be unemployed, bankers will be unemployed if it goes to total central planning, which is communism, and the banks control every the central planners control everything so we're talking about the past present and possible future of what we call money any comments Kim? yeah I, I have a question and we'll and we'll talk about the banks i do have a question eb on the fed coin let's so you're you're saying it's already happening it's already in the works they've they've been planning this for a long time how what's the impact on gold and silver if this fed coin comes out is it more valuable less valuable well, I think the, the Chinese know the answer to that as we were talking. I mean, it, it's, it's so, so it, once you figure this out, it's too late. That's what people need to see maybe, about gold and silver. Yeah. Maybe if, if the Chinese have figured it out, we're finished. <laughs> Cause they go, it's, it's, that, they that's so the, that, yeah. I mean, there, there's a, there's a great book about that called the grand Chessboard, you know, which lays out the policy in the nineties for, you know, post Soviet kind of world, tension. I mean, there's always an enemy, right? So the Chinese will be our chosen, probably our chosen enemy of the next decade. And, and that's, we, we know how that'll go. Okay. But the Chinese know something. I mean, it's an old society, you know, they realize the value of gold. Now, once you have a Fed coin wallet, and as Robert said, once you're in, you know, that type of centralized control, then you'll say, wait a second. I mean, I, I need something that's outside of that. Well, how do I get it? Well, now gold's illegal. It's too late. And, but see, everybody now can say, well, this sounds crazy. I mean, why would they do that? I mean, I, I, the government's here to help me. I mean, I know those friendly people at the airport are trying to protect me. They're not trying to give me a hard time. So, so basically, this is for thinking people. You just say, look, don't take it from me. Go back and look at the Soviet Union. I mean, there was an underground economy that thrived. It absolutely thrived. And, and if you didn't step out of bounds, you know, you could kind of dance in and out of that. And then when things always change, I mean, centralized control never works. And the reason why it doesn't work is because what happens is, is that you, anybody that disagrees is an enemy and you crush all the enemies. And once all the enemies are gone, then the state turns on itself. Well, so it never, it never as, works. As a U.S. Marine, the reason they want to take our guns away yeah. is they can have control if we're unarmed. That's right. But yeah. If we're armed, they'll, they'd be tough to come and take our gold or silver and our lives away. So, so that's why. Well, well, uh, Robert, a hundred years ago, the congressman in your town, okay, he would have never gone along with some of these current efforts in Washington because when he comes home, he would have had to face the people. Yep. But nowadays he's got bodyguards. So anybody that challenges him, you say, well, these people are subversives. They need to be. They need to be shut down and their Fed coin wallet needs to be turned off so they can't buy any, uh, you know, pipes or 
uh, Molotov cocktails or anything, right? I mean, this this is the, you can see how this goes. So they can control everything. So, Ebi, let me give you the scenario that um, records and I see coming, and you can shoot holes in it. Okay, right now the way the system works is the Fed and the Treasury produce money. It goes into the big banks like Goldman and Wells Fargo. And then you and I walk up to the window, we deposit our money, we get our credit cards and we take loans out there. We, Rickards and I suspect when it goes to the Fed coin, those big banks are gone. Because the big banks are, a tra- are what they call the transmission system, you know, like the transmission of a car. But they take the transmission out because it's a Tesla now. Now, what's the possibility of that in the not too distant future? Well, it's a, it's a great question because I think what people don't realize is they look and they try to make these predictions to say, well, what's going to happen to ABC company? But wait a minute, what's going to happen to you? You know <laughs> I mean? The guys, the guys at Goldman are going to be fine because the business changes and it's no longer business. See, as you get, as you have centralized control, business changes. So this is, it becomes a command economy. So it matters how close you are to the power. So look at the treasury secretaries and all these people, they, you see their resume, former Goldman Sachs. Uh, well, I think they're gonna be fine. The business, the business changes. Now, what about the average person? What about the, the, the guy that's working, the, the woman that's working, that's saving, that's trying to invest, and they're using all the things they learned about in the eighties to make decisions today. That's the person that we're trying to talk to, right? I mean, the, the, that's, that's the one that needs help. I'm just asking us, what's the possibility of the banks disappearing, disintermediated? I think the banks will look a lot different. You still need an interface between the consumer and a purchase. Uh, there's still going to be a payment uh, processing function that goes on or a credit extension. It's you know, because people love spending more than they earn, right? It's that's, more of that's a what utility, we, more of a utility, right. utilitarian. Well, uh, let's talk about so the, 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 banks that, the banks that win are the ones that are able to have scale. You know, so it's no longer about put Small the dollars in, loan them out. That's right. That's right. So you have less banks, Robert. So imagine you have, you know, a dozen banks. Now, right now, there's about 7,000 banks in the country. It's way too many. So, so as, this, as this transition continues, you have far less banks. So this is my, this is the reason I'm higher than a kite on Bitcoin, gold, silver, and the dollar and um, bullets. I want something they can't trade. In other words, like, like, like today, one, one reason why gold is kind of interesting, in my opinion, is be, or I call, I, what's what I say today? Gold is for hoarding, silver is for spending. So well, Kim and I have a stash of silver and gold in Brinks and stuff like this, but we ever needed to spend something, we'd go to Brinks, we'd get out our boxes of silver and we would spend it. The Fed cannot track that. So I could walk into my hairdresser and say, I need some hair done or whatever it is. So I think the value in the future, if, and this is if, the wipe out the banks that go to central control is the value may go to gold, Bitcoin, silver, and bullets, as long as they can't track it. What do you think about that? Correct. And in the book, I address a key question. How much is enough to own? I mean, the answer is a lot less than you think is enough, right? I mean, most people have zero gold, zero bullets, zero silver. You know, they have nothing. I mean, they have just the, the paper assets that they've accumulated, mostly liabilities. So how much gold is enough? I mean, the gold is off the grid analog wealth. Everybody <laughs> wants digital wealth. It's analog wealth. I, and I, so you I, don't need it until it's too late. I mean, that, that's I, the problem is, I, is- Okay, hold on. Is that possible that because it's now not traceable, like Chris Rock was a guy that said, he says, if you want to stop murderers, make bullets expensive. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, that's right. <laughs> so hear what I'm saying. I want people to think, not for not listen to what you have to say necessarily. Yeah. If that is possible, if everything is going centralized with a Fed coin, which is communism, that's central planning, will that make things that are not trackable more valuable? Is that possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me, I'm just giving people not, not to get confused. We, 
take some action. So for years and years and years, Kim and I have been putting all this stuff aside because as Chris Rock said, if you, you want to stop murders, make bullets $50,000 a bullet. And I said, well, I'll shoot you as soon as I save my money. That was right. his thing. Yeah. And I think he was, I think Chris Rock was a futurist. So I'm, I'm looking at everything today is, can it be tracked? Is it traceable? Can it be something that the federal government can now take control of and track you through the usage of it? I think that's the question of today. What and do you I, think, Kim? Well, I, I, I'm trusting, hoping that that is the case. Um, who knows what they're going to do? But I can see we were talking earlier about I can see how they're going to sell this Fed coin. I can see how they're going to sell it to the public. They're going to say it's going to stop counterfeiting. It's going to stop money laundering. It's going to stop crime. And it, we have to do this. And everybody's going to go, yeah, yeah, we have to do this. They're going to just put a smoke screen. So, again, people need to understand that what's not traceable and start getting that, but also don't be blinded by the damn narrative that they're going to put out there. So EB, let me give you, I'm going to pick your brain on another subject. This thing about vaccine, they want everybody vaccined. They want that tracked. Is that a similar type of thing as FedCoin? Well, it, who knows how they'll use that to say it's for safety, right? They're saying it's for safety of other people because you might right. not be vaccinated and you'll get someone else sick, but you'll never know that you got them sick because they'll never know who got them sick, but it's you that got them sick. No, so therefore thing, we need to track you. Yeah. Yeah. My concern, the reason I'm hard, hard money guy is I don't want the fed to track me. I don't want Janet Yellen. I don't want the treasurer to track me. I want nobody to track me. And I suspect when I saw COVID come out and they're now saying, got to have an ID card and all that, that's another tracking system. Yeah. I mean, well, it's, they're, they're just trying to help you, Robert. Remember, no, they're no, just but, here to, they're just here to help. Well, it's like, it's like you said, EB, you said, you know, China was going to be the next enemy. I think we are the end. We are now the end of the yeah. people are now the enemy yeah. of the government. Yeah. That's a scary, that's a scary scenario. So, well, you're subversives, you know, they're subversives and we'll shut them down and we'll say, look at these, why do these people want to not be tracked? What are they hiding? This is the yeah. way the narrative will go. Yeah. Right. So th that's really, I want to give people another reason to listen to what you have to say to read. You, you have a fantastic book, but they have to get educated. They have to be more, in, more self-interested versus I think what Hitler said is just thank God for people that don't think. You know, they just do as they're told. And what your book does, it gets people think like it got me thinking about royalties. You know, we should have done royalties, but in hindsight, we got to deal with the Chinese. And when I, when I dealt with the Chinese, I know what dealing with them is like, do you know? And, and it's not, not the same. Like I said, when I was in Cameroon, I saw the Chinese, that would be camps, you guys, huge, huge camps or I think the Uyghurs go into too, and they have, they're like concentration camps where their workers, they go get things done. I flew over a compound in Zimbabwe. It was so big, it was incredible. And so China isn't just China. They're all over the world. And what are we doing in America? And so that's why I encourage people to go silver, Bitcoin, bullets, whatever you can do while we're still free. So I really encourage people to read your book, Why Gold Right Now, because it goes beyond gold and why now, because our freedoms yep. are being taken. I think that's my primary concern. Final words are EB. Well, people can see it before it's too late. I mean, the subtitle of the book is The War Against Your Wealth and How to Win It. And that's what people need to see is that the, the stakes are serious here. It's everything you've worked for. It's all the things you've believed up to this point. And if you can see this roadmap before all the dominoes fall, I think you could do something about it. And you don't have to be a billionaire to do it. As you know, Robert, the book is written for the person next door because you can see this now. You can do it. And yep. it's easier than you think. So, A.B., the thing I love about your book is that it goes beyond money. It's our freedom. It is our freedom. That, that's that's what, right. That's what the war is. The yeah. war, we're fighting for our freedom, for our liberties. And that's why people really need to, they need to wake up. Yeah. They need to wake the up. Money's, the money's the easy part, Kim. I mean, yeah. that's what people don't understand. I mean, you can, you, can, yeah. you can work the money thing out. The freedom thing is not easy. No. And how do you plan for your freedom? 
So, That's Ibrahim, right. thank you, thank you, thank you for writing a book. Thanks for being so articulate and making it simple for yeah. people to understand. And everybody, please listen. We can always learn more. You know, money is more than the dollar in your pocket. So when we come back, we'll be talking more about what you can do, what the future is. But we want you thinking about the future, not the, not so much the past. We'll be right back. Thank you, E.B. Thank you, E.B. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money plus the future of money. I want to thank E.B. Tucker for waking us up. What's going to happen? And once again, remind people, we don't make recommendations. You know, he. I'm glad he talked about his company, Metallic, Metalla. And, but just remember, Kim and I have been in the gold mining business for years now and silver, and we know a, quite a bit about it, so we don't make any recommendations because, you know what they say, what's the definition of a liar? The definition of a liar is a gold miner standing next to a hole in the ground. There's probably nothing there. So anyway, that's why, please be careful. Any comments? You no, know, we've had a lot of nothing there, hole in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really think this show really, when we summed it up at the end, was about your freedom and your liberties. And as E.B. said, you know, the money piece is easy. The money piece on what to do with gold and silver and Bitcoin and, and bullets, um, that's the easy part. The hard part is when they start taking away more and more of our freedoms and our liberties. And that's what we're really fighting about. So, Sarah, you were talking about what's happening now with people who are Bitcoin billionaires. What's happening? Yeah. So we aired a show back in March with Tom Wheelwright on taxes and crypto because the government's starting to ha have their hand out. OK, give me my piece. And we'd always talked about it being decentralized and outside of the government. But I feel like the government's definitely going to take their piece. If they want it, they're going to figure out how to. So we see so many people now question, you know, posting questions on that show, which was posted three months ago. Um, like I have all this, you know, all this money and now I owe taxes on it because I traded it or, you know, all of the taxable events. But I just think it's the realization, you know, people thought it's money. I can do with it what I want. But now the government's stepping in and say, well, we want our peace. And if they're stepping in, then they know that you have it. And that's another way of tracking your, your money. Exactly. So I think you said it earlier in the show, like, just be aware that this is happening. Um, in fact, have a different plan. It, I mean, it, it's so interesting. Money is money, you know, and I was talking, you know, that our, uh, person does our body work, Caitlin, you know, she's been into crypto, crypto, crypto. After my doctor was giving me a massage, she's crypto, crypto, crypto. So she went to the crypto conference in, or the Bitcoin conference in Miami. I said, what happened? She said, somebody stole my wallet. And I said, you stole your purse? No. They stole our coin bag or whatever they call, guys call. Okay. I mean, how, how does somebody steal something off your computer? She says, I don't know. No, there's a hard wallet. So it's a separate hard wallet that you download your crypto key to. And I think Robert Breedlove mentioned it, like she has to have her key. But if she wasn't secure about her thing, the little device looks like, you know, a flash drive or whatever, has all her Bitcoin stored on it. So if you lose that, oh, like your it's tracer. gone. Like yes, your exactly. Yeah. She lost her. Yeah. So it's like the guy, I think, in L.A., he he had thrown it his in the trash or something. He, and lost, his word, he lost his keywords and he lost his code to get... Yeah. To get access to it, it was a lot. Of, it was a lot of Bitcoin. It was millions, oh, yeah. millions. Yeah. So that's another part of it is the security <laughs> and the storage. Right. Security and storage is just as important as owning ownership. Yeah. But this is yeah. what's, what's funny about it. So she's working on my body. She says, "So what you do, Caitlin?" She says, "I call the Phoenix Police." I said, "What they say?" They went. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how are they going to track it? No I, way, I, no I, I sit here listening to him, <laughs> but I really want to get to the point of this show. The prophet is Chris Rock. Remember, if you want to stop violence, just raise the price of bullets. You know, I mean, when he said that, I went, okay, I, I, I kill you, but I have to borrow some money before I can shoot you. <laughs> I think what we're coming down to, the summation of the show, what becomes more valuable is what they can't track. Any comments on that? No, I think that's absolutely right. And it's a little scary when, when E.B. was talking about, you know, China being the enemy and it's clear that the people are now the enemy and they're going to do everything possible to control people. Um, right. So the more that I can fight against that and, and fight for our freedoms and our liberties, that's, but that's what we're about. But it's being tracked. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's hard to not be tracked. You can't oh be my tracked. Because now they can track Bitcoin. Jeez. It's yeah. amazing. Any comments? On that? Yeah, just final comments is, is be careful. This is, you ended it with get it educated because. Listen to people. Listen, Keep an open mind. Yeah. Um, because then you'll, you'll take away, you won't be blindsided, like Kim said, when, when they do start asking 
for more information or get taking your own Bitcoin or whatever. Yeah, I know. I, the, the other night, I couldn't find my credit card. I was lost. And went, well, how do I survive without my yeah. credit card? And you know, the other piece is, is people <laughs> say this is this drives me absolutely nuts when they say, "Oh, well, I have nothing to hide, so I don't care if they track me." Yeah, you don't care if they track every move you make. They don't. You don't care if they track your your bank accounts and all of your private. You don't care that they're tracking you. Oh, I have nothing to hide. That hey, was the whole argument against the Patriot stupid. Act when they <laughs> the Patriot Act. What a stupid name. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that was they were like, oh well, I don't care if the government tracks me because yeah. I have nothing to hide. So yes, yes you're exactly your right. Point. It's a big problem. One more point is that we're talking about. You have people can't see it, you know, and. The fortunate thing for me, I've been all over the world looking for gold. I remember in Cameroon, I saw these huge trenchers going across Cameroon. I said, who are those guys? They're Chinese. And then I was in Zimbabwe, this huge camp. I said, who are those guys? They're Chinese. And then when they say, well, what do you have against the Chinese? I mean, China is now the biggest gold producer in the world because Kim, myself, and our buddy Frank found the biggest gold mine in the world, and the Chinese took it. So that woman bitching about her boot, Bitcoin purse or whatever it is, but you're bitching. They took a gold mine from us. A big but, gold mine, a huge but, gold mine. The, but so this is the, when you step back, keep looking at it, open your eyes, so you can get further back from it. China is now the largest gold producer in the world. America is the biggest debtor in the world. Interesting times. Just thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. <laughs> Chỉ một mình anh ngồi không Nước mắt đây, riêng nơi đây Em không hay, sự thật là anh nhớ em Người giờ đã xa Lời hẹn ước đâu rồi Nước mắt đây sao mặt đâu nhưng lúc đây anh loay hoay trong cơn say lại nhầm rằng em ở đây người ra đổi thay tình mình vẫn đong đầy thêm ai biết anh vẫn yêu em thì sao tìm quên chuôn xưa ngày ta quen